Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Longview Chamber of Commerce Tech Talk. Uh, today, I am going to provide you with some real-world scenarios that you can customize and use in your own business. My goal by the end of this video is to provide you with a framework and understanding of how automations work uh, and how you can implement them in your own business to help increase your productivity, proficiency, and profitability. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to provide you with the QR code that is going to essentially take these seven scenarios that you can then import them into your own platform and utilize them and customize them how you see fit in your business and add additional processes um, once you're able to import them into your um, automation um, software. So before we begin, I have to get this out of the way. Uh, my name is Abel Sanchez. I am the owner and COO of Starfish Ad Age. We're a digital marketing agency. Um, we are not your typical ad agency. We actually help a lot of our clients with innovative ways of how to um, look at marketing from a high level perspective. AI has changed the game and we are obviously wanting to make sure that our clients understand that AI is um, a huge help in their business and how they can operate and essentially create um, workflows that will help them increase all of those things, the productivity, the proficiency, and obviously the main ingredient here is going to be the profitability. So enough about me and Starfish. Let's get into it. All right. So before we begin, I briefly want to just go over exactly what we're going to uh, be discussing today. So today we're going to be discussing uh, business operations, marketing and sales, AI chatbots, real estate, or roofing, uh, health and wellness, and then training and development. Now, I'm going to try to do this all in one shot without cutting any um, editing or anything. So I'm obviously using Loom. So, um, But what I wanted to do is I want to make sure that each one of these examples are um, seen from a high-level perspective without me really understanding how your business works, uh, but it's going to kind of give you a really good understanding of what you can do in your own business and spark that idea of how the processes can be um, improved in your uh, operations. So one thing I wanted to mention is that the platforms that we use are, there's a lot of platforms out there um, that provide individuals with no code and no programming experience that will allow you to make these integrations uh, from system to system. So these platforms like Zapier or Make.com, these are all platforms that actually can create and make these connections uh, between systems. And they've got thousands and thousands of different systems that you can essentially make these connections uh, and integrations from those platforms into your own business. Now, again, these are just going to be real world overview scenarios, uh, but it's going to give you a really good idea of how these automations work and what you can do for your own business. Before we begin, I have to kind of explain the difference between an automation and a workflow. Now, just like everything in marketing, um, a lot of times uh, and in tech, a lot of times uh, something, uh, you know, essentially does the same thing, but it doesn't do the same thing. And this is just one of those examples. So automation, what it does is it basically helps um, automate um, certain processes in your operation that will require minimal human intervention. Um, and what it does is increases the efficiency and reduces errors and saves businesses time and money or operations. Um, now, that's automation. Now, workflows is a little bit different because workflows, essentially what it does, it takes um, a set of data or information and it applies a specific rule into um, the process and how that process is dictated from start to finish. Um, so what it will essentially do, it, it helps organize and structure the process um, in a manner that is ensuring that the task is being completed. So I know they kind of sound the same, but they really aren't. So, but understand that I'm going to be using both of these two, um, uh, um, you know, automation and workflow interchangeably during this presentation. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so business operation scenario. So let's say you are a B2B or a B2C and you operate on the um, – by having a contract signed in order for anything to actually start the process or any projects or work um, to even start. So this is what a overview of a specific business operation scenario how this would look. So for an example, oh, by the way, before we um, continue, I want to make sure that you guys uh, understand what a CRM is. Uh, a CRM is basically a customer management platform. Uh, you know, any anything that you use to manage your leads or manage sales uh, and manage your customer relationship with, um, you know, um, from support to sales, whatever the case is, that's a CRM. So whenever I say CRM, that basically what that is. So there's CRMs like HubSpot are the famous ones, um, PipeDrive, um, High Level, you know, so on and so forth. There's a ton of them out there, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that you understand what the CRM is and what um, that means. Because as I go through this, that's going to be something that I constantly use as an example of. So in this scenario, we're going to look at so this scenario, obviously a lead is in your CRM system and the customer, let's just say the customer has agreed to move forward with whatever um, agreement with your business. So the deal is basically one here. And then what happens is you will end up sending a email to that customer with a set of instructions. Let's just say um, whatever instructions you have, maybe there's going to be a scheduled follow-up or um, you know, you're going to send a document for them to sign and maybe there's some uh, certain specific instructions that you want the consumer or the customer to um, go through. This is where that email would go in there and it's basically a welcome and thank you, so on and so forth. Once that is done and sent out, then your actual contract is going to going to be sent out, whether that's DocuSign or Adobe Sign, doesn't matter. Um, the Basically, what will happen, well, the consumer is going to, or the customer is going to get that document. Once they sign it, an automation is going to happen where immediately they're going to, once it's signed, they're going to get a email. Now, in that email, two different pathways happen here. So in that email, they're going to have the uh, ability to set up a onboarding call with your team, um, if that's something that you guys do, and then it'll split it into the other pathway where it creates a, uh, essentially a, um, a space or a list of tasks for projects in your project management system. So if you have a project management system that you use in order to track all the projects or uh, jobs that your business has, then obviously it would automatically create this. So one thing I do want to um, make sure that you guys understand here is this entire process and these processes that we're going to talk about, all of this is done by pushing one button. So meaning like if you win the customer here, and your team immediately moves them into the win column or you know closes the deal out as you won the, the deal, all of this process happens automatically without you having to touch a single thing. If the systems are put in place correctly, you will never have to touch this at all, um, aside from making maybe some minor uh, uh, maintenance. But other than that, this process is done seamlessly um, just by you actually saying the deal is won. All of this happens. So it goes from the deal one, and then it splits into them scheduling their appointment, followed by any other additional task that you might have after that, after the fact. Um, and the other pathway is obviously into your project management system to immediately go ahead and set up the uh, customer as a new customer, so on and so forth. You can even add an additional, let's say, for an example, you can add um, additional scenario or pathway would be your QuickBooks, you can add them to your QuickBooks account. Um, you can segment them out into uh, your audiences and for future marketing, so on and so forth. So uh, there's a lot more that you can add here. But again, this is just a high level approach from a straight, I won the customer or my team won the customer. And then boom, all of this happens without you having to do anything. All right. So that's scenario number one on the business side. All right. So let's go into the next one, which is going to be the marketing and sales. Now, this one, um, obviously, being in marketing, this is one of my favorites, but there's a lot of things that you can do with this. So, for example, here, 
this right here will be all of your traffic sources. So let's say for an example, um, the customer or the lead fills out a form or they send a message on social media, you know, whatever the case is, however your traffic is generated, this is, would be the starting point. Okay. So once the traffic is, um, the lead has been generated, excuse me, uh, it's going to go into the CRM system. Okay. So now it's going to either update the lead or it's going to create a brand new lead. And then from there, what will happen is you can essentially have a conversational AI jump into the mix. So let's say somebody contacts you guys late in the evening. There's no salespeople, but you want to make sure that your customer understands that you've, you guys have acknowledged that the lead was or the submission to whatever it is that they requested has been um, sent to you. So you will have an AI that will understand based on the knowledge base that you have provided the AI with enough information to be able to do two things. Now, you can set this up where the ultimate goal is to either do two things. Now, in this scenario, the goal is either you buy something or you schedule an appointment. So you'll see how these two are split into the schedule appointment and then they purchase something. So let's say for an example, let's go with the buying scenario. So in the buying scenario, what's going to happen or the path, what's going to happen is the customer uh, has already or the AI has already decided and spoken with the customer during the conversation and they'd want to buy a service from you. So when they buy the service from you, it'll immediately create the actual um, uh, QuickBooks. Sorry, I lost train of thought. QuickBooks. Um, and then from there, it'll create an email, send them to either uh, two different pathways. Uh, here, you can either have a essential, uh, let's say for an example, a webhook that will connect to your project management system and so on and so forth. So again, these are just two basic scenarios. Uh, the other one would be obviously the form and the lead now becomes a customer is added into your CRM system for additional marketing or whatever the case is, however you want to continue that path and that process moving forward for that customer. Now that's the buying side of things is very simple, um, you know, easy, uh, simple to use, so on and so forth. Now, the other one is going to be your scheduled appointment. Now, on the scheduled appointment, this one is uh, the, what what happens here is once the AI has determined that the customer wants to schedule an appointment with you, then it would immediately take them to a either a uh, um, your individual account or your individual schedule or to your team schedule. So it really depends how you guys set this up. So if you have several team members or several salespeople, then you can easily create this where it rotates on different uh, uh, team members. So that way, not everyone is getting all of the, the, the actual leads coming in and it splits them in between the you know handful of or the team that you have. So that would be the first on the schedule. Once the AI has had that conversation and they want to schedule an appointment, it creates the actual lead or updates the lead in the CRM system. From there, it's going to send them an email to confirm or set of instructions. Let's say you have a set of instructions of what you want this customer or potential customer. Um, and then let's say they decide, yes, I'm going to move forward. And they go ahead and sign the document. And they're now going to become a client of yours. That automatically happens. Once they sign it, it creates an invoice in your um, QuickBooks account or whatever accounting software that you're using. And then from there, once the invoice is paid, then it sends it over to the the project management system that will essentially create the new customer uh, or update the customer in your uh, project management system. And then from there, it's going to send an email to either onboard or continue the conversation with one of your team members by scheduling an appointment for the onboarding. So again, these are very high level uh, overviews of what you can do and how you can use these. So none of these um, are, you know, obviously you can make the adjustments how you see the process work in your business. But essentially, these are when the customer is generated into the traffic, goes into the CRM, and then this is the beauty right here, which is the AI have the, has the conversation with that customer by splitting them into two different pathways, either buying or selling. So it depends on what your goal is overall.
but that is a overview of how the marketing and sales scenario could work. Okay, so next is going to be the AI chatbot. All right. In this scenario is a um, multi-language chatbot. So English and Spanish, uh, this can either be a support, a sales, or additional services uh, like an upsell. So let's go through this particular scenario. All right. So let's say, for an example, um, your website has a chatbot or CRM system, whatever, whatever the case is. So essentially what's going to happen here is the AI chatbot is going to have a conversation with that lead. Once it's there and depending on what the goal is, it's going to determine whether it's going to go into a sales process, uh, or it's going to go into a support process, or it's going to go into a additional services or an upsell. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the sales process first. So in the sales process, the, the, uh, um, the lead is generated. Once it's generated, it, it's either going to update the CRM or it's going to um, create a brand new lead or cu customer. Once that's done, it starts another conversation with the uh, customer by now trying to figure out exactly what the, diff what, what the customer needs here. Do they want a direct sale or do they want to schedule an appointment? So once it figures out and has the conversation, uh, then it's going to either generate an invoice so they can pay it, or it's going to create a calendar, uh, set up a calendar for your team or anybody in your sales team to be able to reach out and, you know, have a conversation and then essentially drop them in back into the CRM system where you can also have other marketing or remarketing tools uh, applied to this. But essentially, this would be your sales uh, pathway. Now, on your service pathway, this one's really interesting because on your on your service pathway or your support, one thing that you could actually do with the support pathway is if you can build an actual AI bot that will have all of the knowledge base, everything that you do in your business and the you know frequently asked questions applied into this chatbot, and it's going to essentially... Let's say, for an example, you happen to have a PDF file that has all of the things that you guys operate, um, things that maybe can be fixed um, over the years. You guys have run into certain um, situations or scenarios that you know now, okay, if this happens, then the customer needs to do this, so on and so forth. Whatever the case is, you can apply and add all of this knowledge base into your chatbot. So that way it pulls the information from there. That way it, it does not hallucinate the and give improper or incorrect information to the customer and from there after that's done after that conversation it will essentially do whatever it needs to do from a webhook so from here you can essentially add more um, modules or add more software or more automations to it once it's done here so creates this is cool because it obviously learns and understands based off of exactly your business and your business um, you know frequently asked questions and then it'll immediately send the customer whatever information, so on and so forth. So the next one is going to be additional services. So let's say for an example, you've got a current customer and they obviously um, would like to buy some additional services from you. And it requires a project or it requires a job for multiple people to actually um, fulfill that particular uh, request. So once that's done and it's added to your CRM system, from your CRM system, it's going to add it into your project management system. From there, it's going to go into, let's say, another module or whatever that case is, sends an email over to the customer with a set of instructions, and then essentially, if you need to schedule an appointment or that customer has to schedule an appointment with your team for any onboarding processes, then that's where you guys would essentially be able to um, you know, uh, send that over to your team. So again, pretty straightforward, but the beauty behind this is that you actually have two different languages here that um, are helping your customers, whether that's English or Spanish, very same scenario, very same pathway, nothing changes, just obviously the difference in the language. Okay, so the next one is, um, and, and by the way, I want to mention, so um, I know that I'm going kind of 
quickly with some of these and you're probably taking some notes. If you are, don't worry, because at the end of this video, um, I'm going to show you exactly how you're able to import these into your own uh, uh, account. And then you can see the different scenarios in the notes. And I'm going to show you that at the end of this video. All right. So let me go ahead and go into the marketing, or I'm sorry, the uh, real estate. Okay, so this is the real estate. So I started thinking about how, how I could provide the best value for a real estate agent from two different scenarios or two different perspectives. So when I looked at this, I'm looking at it from a buyer's perspective and from a seller's perspective. Now, um, I wanted to make sure that this was a good way for either a broker or an agent to look at this. So in this particular scenario, you're going to see a couple of different pathways. So what's going to happen here is obviously the traffic, whatever um, traffic source you have out there, however your customer goes into your, um, you know, as a lead. So once the traffic is generated, let's say it's either from a form fill, a contact, a phone call, whatever the case is. What will happen here is the AI is going to start to have a conversation based off of your own knowledge base and, you know, set of required um, qualifying questions that you want to apply. So that way it understands exactly what it needs to do here. So here what's going to happen is it's going to take the buyer and seller. So it'll understand whether this person or this lead is a buyer or if they are a seller. Now, we're going to go with the buyer's perspective um, from the very beginning. So, and I'm going to do this because there's something that I wanted to show you and how you probably already doing this in your business or you may not, but let's go through this anyways. All right. So the lead is generated and we find out that they are a buyer. They go into your CRM system. From there, the chat bot is going to have another conversation with that lead by trying to figure out um, your qualifying questions that you have. So let's say for an example, this customer is just, uh, you know, they're kind of just looking at certain properties. They're not really ready to actually buy. So at this moment, what the chat bot is going to do, it's going to split the pathway into basically just dropping an email or setting up, setting them up by sending them an email, uh, maybe follow-ups or new properties that might fit their particular uh, needs. And then it's going to put them in the CRM system. So once it puts them in the CRM system, it basically already took your qualifying questions. You know, this um, individual is looking at, um, you know, a $250,000 home. Uh, they're looking for X amount of square footage. Um, they have X amount down payment, whatever the case is. So you've already established that criteria and it's already added as that customer um, into a segmented audience. So that way later on, you're able to do some marketing for them. Uh, now, the other scenario is going to be now this person is a qualified uh you know, lead. So from here, what will happen is you can schedule, have them schedule an appointment with one of your team or one of your agents uh, to be able to look at a specific property, so on and so forth. From there, let's say the agent or you have to sign or they have to sign some type of documentation. Um, they want to move forward and have you guys represent them as um, a buyer in the market. So you would send them whatever documentation you need to send over to them, have them sign it. Once it signs, it goes into the CRM system system um, as a new buyer or um, customer for your agent. Now, those are, again, this is two different pathways, but essentially it's a buyer's pathway. Okay. So next is going to be from the seller's perspective. So from the seller's perspective, it's going to essentially take the lead into the CRM system and then it's going to have, ask a set of questions. And then from there, what's going to happen is it's going to schedule an appointment with uh, your team or the broker. And from there, what will happen also is the agreement or anything that needs any type of legal documentation that you need to send over, it'll send it over. From there, it's going to add them to your project management system and add them into um, either set them up as an account and then from there, it'll assign the task out to whoever that agent is, followed by any kind of, let's say you have a list of checklists that you need to go through or your agent has to go through um, uh, whenever you have a seller 
that let's say you need to know exactly where the property is ahead. You need to value, whatever the case is. So all of that checklist is done and added into the project management system. So that way your team can start to execute on those tasks. So now once that's done, it is going to split it into two different pathways here. So the first one that it's going to do is it's going to add them into the CRM system. Okay. Now, once it's added into your CRM system, what will happen is, you know, going back to the uh, buyer's perspective, those criteria that happen up here. Now, if this customer that you had that was a buyer, now all of a sudden, because you made the update over here for the, for the, uh, um, for the seller, now the seller, let's say this customer, this seller's property fits your lead over here's criteria or buying needs, then it will immediately start to email them updates on this particular property. So once they start getting the updates and the remarketing on that property, then obviously you might have this particular buyer, even though this buyer uh, did not you know, move forward with you, but now they see this particular uh, property that they like, they go to their other agent and their agent contacts you, so on and so forth. That's how that process obviously works. <coughs> Excuse me. The last thing that happens here is I use TikTok as an advertising uh, uh, platform, but essentially what it'll do is once you get the property, once you get everything, let's say you guys have showing, let's say you, uh, pictures, whatever it is, you want to put it into an advertising platform, um, you could essentially create and segment an actual audience out in that platform so that way it starts to target the individuals that fit that criteria of um, buying this particular property. So... Again, real world scenario, high level perspective, um, you can tweak, you can make changes, so on and so forth. But here's the beauty, as I mentioned before, is that all of this was done without you having to do anything. So that is the beauty behind the automation. It's like it happens once. So it happens when the lead is generated inside your own traffic source, website, whatever that is. And all of this is done without you having to do anything. I can't, I think about that. I mean, you don't have to do anything. All of this is automatically done for you, which is awesome. Saves a lot of time. So, all right, let's go ahead and go to the next one. All right, the roofing scenario. So let me jump into roofing scenario. Okay, so in this roofing scenario, so what I did was any type of traffic source that is generated here, so let's say whether that's a form fill, whether, you know, a uh, phone call, whatever the case is. So the, 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 the lead or the customer is generated here. Once it's generated, it goes into your CRM system. Again, the conversational AI will jump in the mix, create two different pathways to either schedule an appointment and then add them to your actual platform or job platform that you guys use. Because I know that some of these companies, service-based companies typically use platforms um, like Service Titan, um, you know, Job Nimbus. Um, so there's there's a ton of different platforms I, without knowing exactly which one you're using for your projects and for your team and for your business. Then um, essentially what you can do is you would be able to replace this particular one. And then what will happen is once it goes into the schedule, it goes into creates an account and a new lead into your platform or your project management system that you're using from there. It'll generate a lead 24 hours or an email 24 hours prior to you guys having to go out to that particular property and help them out. Okay, so that would be the first pathway that the um, generative AI takes for you. And then the second one <clears throat> is going to be a remarketing or a marketing one. So let's say, for an example, this particular client does not purchase um, or move forward with you for you know any uh, services that you guys offer. Um, so now what will happen is it's going to essentially put them into your CRM system. Once it puts them into your CRM system, it's going to put them into a segmentation or an audience segmentation, um, however you guys decide to set this up. And then what will happen is you can essentially have a weather API. So a weather app, any kind of weather app that you're, you're currently using that will pull the information from if there's extreme weather that's happening <clears throat> And it's, you know, let's say it's their forecast of rain and hail. Well, you definitely want to be able to send these leads that were here an email and including not just these leads, but also your current customers as well. So essentially what you would do is you would be able to trigger whenever bad weather is coming. 
uh, to send. Now, again, I, what I did here was I just created these particular platforms or channels. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to use these, but these are essentially the channels that I established. So Facebook Messenger, you can send out a uh, messenger and say, hey, bad weather coming, please say, stay safe. If you need anything, you know, you can reach out to us. We're here to help, whatever the case is. So whatever message you want. Um, and then essentially, if your CRM system has any type of, you know, additional text message, emails, you know, whatever the case is, you can send additional remarketing tools. Uh, and then again, you can create a custom audience inside the marketing platforms that will allow you to actually remarket them and trigger these ads uh, during a time of bad weather. So that way you are at the top of mind of those individuals that you have already established in your CRM. So w again, this is kind of a high level perspective of uh, what you could do with a roofing scenario and a real world, um, you know, a breakdown of what you could essentially use in your business or roofing business. All right, let's go to the next one. Health and wellness. All right, so this one is pretty interesting because this one is going to do a couple of things, um, which, so let's say on this one, you happen to have a service, um, two different services. We're gonna take two different services here in this scenario. So the lead is generated here once it's generated from whatever traffic source, it's going to go into your CRM system. Once it goes into your CRM system, it's going to send that customer a either a text message or an email. And let's say you have a set of questions that you need to know to determine which services or products you want, which services you want this particular lead or customer to, you know, go down a pathway. So let's say for an example on this one, it is going to be for joining a membership or a wellness um, program that you currently have. So let's say for an example, this one here, um, once it understands and once you've established that answer to the question, then it's going to separate the two. Now it's going to send them into a conversational AI. So the conversation is basically about joining the uh, um, the wellness program. You know, it goes into your CRM system. CRM system then creates a uh, um, a invoice, sends the invoice, schedules the appointment with that particular customer or that new member of your you know uh, service, whatever that is. So very simple. Find out the information from the AI. AI pulls it, generates a new lead or updates a new lead, creates the invoice, schedules the appointment. Okay, now. On the second one, this one is, let's say you are a uh, fitness trainer. And uh, what you can do here is you could essentially have a knowledge base of everything that you offer as a, you know, fitness um, coach. Uh, you could essentially create a AI chatbot that is going to speak like you, provide the answers like you, provide a preliminary um you know, workout plan or meal plan here and send it over to the customer. And how this is going to work is basically the AI has a conversation based off of your knowledge base. Once that's done, it's going to go into the CRM system, goes into the CRM system uh, as a new customer, and then it sends the invoice over to the customer and the customer pays it, schedules the appointment. But here's where the real beauty happens right here is between the AI chatbot um, that's having the conversation in the CRM system. So what will happen, it's going to give them a preliminary kind of meal plan or preliminary kind of, you know, workout plan that they can use and it's going to provide value to them. So essentially, it's going to help them want to move forward because they're going to trust you more. Once that happens, goes into the CRM system, pay the invoice, schedule the appointment for you guys to, you know, obviously meet, do whatever it is that you need to do. But essentially, it has two, this uh, scenario has two different pathways, a more approach for a membership or a wellness program or an actual tailored approach uh, based off of your knowledge base that you've added into your AI. So this is a pretty cool scenario for uh, um, any type of you know, fitness trainer or a wellness or, or um, health provider. It's an awesome, awesome uh, type of setup. So again, these are high level approaches. So if you 
need to make any modifications, you can definitely make the modifications here. Okay. All right, so this last one is going to be obviously the training and um, development. So in this scenario, what's going to happen, it's a very straightforward, um, simple scenario. So let's say you have a new employee or a new candidate and they, you send them a offer letter. Okay. The offer letter, um, basically they've got to sign it, uh, for whatever, um, you know, however your process or your operations or HR work, they sign the offer letter. Once they sign the offer letter, it goes into an email with a set of instructions of what's going to happen or what's going to follow from here. Um, and then it essentially sends them another DocuSign or Adobe sign, which basically has the employee handbook um, or et cetera, whatever it is that you have that you need them to fill out. Once they sign that, it's going to essentially break them up into two different pathways. So the first one, first pathway is going to be, obviously, it's going to use the pathway, send them into a project management system. Let's say, for an example, you have a individual in your um, operations that uh, obviously does the onboarding, helps the staff member with training, so on and so forth. So this is where the project management system, that way you guys can have a checklist of any onboarding uh, kind of in new employee onboarding packages or checklist that needs to happen for your team. It essentially will create it right here. All right. The second pathway is going to be going into your HR <clears throat> software. So once it's created in your HR software, you can add an additional type of webhook. Now on this webhook, the, one of the things that you could actually do here, now I know a lot of businesses that we've spoken to uh, have been talking about, you know, having some type of central hub or a portal that when new employees are hired, they have to watch training videos. Um, so here, what you could do is you could essentially have a individual, a separate task or pathway that will create some new automations that will essentially create the user, the uh, uh, generate a temporary password, send it over to the employee, and they have access to those videos, um, any type of standard operating procedures or SOPs that your current business has or that they need to follow. So this right here basically does it all for you, sets it all up. So um, again, I don't know what type of processes or any type of training software internally that you guys use. So without really knowing uh, um, exactly what you guys have, but this essentially will give you the exact same uh, next steps for you to take. Now, the one thing, as I mentioned before, I know that I went through a lot of this um, pretty quickly. I, I didn't have that much time, but here's the one thing that you can do. If you decide to actually download these uh, scenarios. The cool thing about it is once you download, you'll be able to actually import them into your um, uh, account. Once you create your account, you can import them. Once they're imported, the cool thing is you go down to this notes and it's going to provide you every single, what each one of these steps are, and then you can modify it how you see fit. So pretty cool. Um, easy peasy, at least I think so. But again, um, if you need any help, uh, we're here to help if you are interested. Uh, but essentially, all of this should be a pretty quick, easy process for you um, without providing, without you actually having to understand any code or any programming uh, language. Very simple. These platforms, this particular platform that I'm using is called Make. Uh, you can set up an account. It's, it's free, um, which is awesome, obviously. And you can uh, start to create some automations for your own business pretty quickly. So, all right. And here is the QR code um, that is going to take you to a landing page that's basically going to have the scenarios. So, um, you can download the scenarios. You can use them into your own account. But all in all, um, these are the foundation of what can help and spark the new ideas to create the automations for your business. All right. I hope this was useful. I hope you found um, information that, that you can easily apply into your business today. And if you need any help, by all means, we're here to help. If you are interested, obviously, you can set up a, uh, a call with our team or set up a call with me. 
and we can go through the process of figuring out exactly how you would like to have the operations or workflows and automations to work for your business. Again, I want to thank you. I want to thank the chamber for allowing me to um, talk about automation. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. Other than that, thank you so much.